Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. Well, this week finds me kind of halfway in between a number of different projects and as so often happens when you're building guitars, uh, you often run into periods where you're kind of forced to put stuff on hold while you wait for parts to get shipped in and that sort of thing. I try to plan them out as carefully as possible and make sure I have everything before I start to build. But sometimes things change. I might change something, a customer might change something. At any rate, it, it will mean a slight delay on some of the projects. So what I thought I would do with this episode is I would revisit a topic which I had mentioned in a previous video. And that was the one where I had asked if it's possible to build a better guitar using either hand tools or a CNC machine. And I'll post a link up here to that video in case you'd like to go back and watch it. But I've had some thoughts since that video was posted and I noticed there were a lot of interesting comments. So I thought I would kind of go back and revisit that a little bit and talk a little bit about some of my thoughts as well as some of your thoughts. And I've been building guitars for about 15 years now. And in truth, it was only after about the third or fourth guitar that I started to entertain the idea of using a CNC machine. And the reason was I just really am, am intrigued and fascinated by the whole process of using CNC technology, both for designing and building the guitar. So I had thought that would be a really cool way to kind of uh, inject some new enthusiasm and interest in what I do. Well, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which involved price and complexity, noise, and that sort of thing, I decided to hold off. And when I eventually got a CNC machine, it was about five years ago. And when I got that machine, I showed videos of me actually building guitars with it. And I was really surprised at that time of the amount of pushback I got from people who were concerned that using a CNC machine was somehow cheating. It meant that we were, it was just another step towards losing that artistic handmade techniques and skills that we take such pride in, in learning to do and replacing it with push button technology. Well, flash forward five years and to my surprise, a lot of people's opinions have changed. So instead of people being so against the whole idea of CNC technology, it seems like a lot more people are coming around and not only accepting it, or maybe some, in some cases reluctantly accepting it, but actually there's some enthusiasm about what its potential means. And so I, I found that when I posted that video comparing handbuilt guitars with CNC guitars, I was really surprised at how many people have jumped on board with the, with the technology and how many people are accepting it as a, a viable way for building guitars today and then going into the future. However, there still are some folks who are vocal in their lack of enthusiasm and support for CNC technology. And I can understand that. I mean, in truth, when it comes to hand building, there's a certain romance to it. And I think that a lot of folks, when they see a guitar that was made entirely with bow saws, chisels, spoke shaves, hand planes, they get that warm, fuzzy feeling about it. And maybe not so much for when a guitar is made with CNC technology. Now the cool thing is the CNC technology is evolving and it's becoming more available to more people and as a result, we're starting to see the true potential of CNC. Some of the early adopters were doing it because they like CNC technology and how it can make their job more simple. But there are now a crop of people who are getting into CNC who are doing it because they see the creative potential. And that's where we're going to start to see some amazing things from CNC. Obviously, everybody who wants to, to build guitars using this technology and they want to do so to make a living, 
are going to look for ways to do it better and more uniquely than what their competition is doing. So that's where we're going to start to see some amazing things that are going to happen with CNC technology. When I first started doing CNC five years ago, I was using the uh, XCAR from Inventables, which is a machine that I still highly recommend if you've never done this sort of thing before. And I learned everything that I could with CNC technology using the XCAR. And then eventually, my interest and enthusiasm for CNC led me to want to build my own machine. And once I had completed that machine, and I had actually posted some videos on YouTube about this machine, I started getting a lot of questions from people about how this machine was built and specifically if I ever was intending to offer plans. And as I speak, I am still fine tuning the plans. In fact, I'll be eventually posting plans for my workbench, my buffing machine, my drum sander, and my CNC machine. But it, it's taken a lot of time to get all that put together. And I want to make these plans so that they are as easy to understand as possible. And it gets pretty complicated, especially when you're dealing with a machine like this and all the different steps that are involved. However, now is an opportunity. Here we are in May of 2019, and recent events in our global slash political realm is going to affect how you are able to build all these different kind of tools. And that has me somewhat concerned, and I'm sure it has some of you concerned. And that kind of brings up another topic of discussion. How is tariffs and trade wars going to affect what it is we do? And I can see some positive potential, and I can also see some negative possibilities. And it just, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see where this is all going to end up and how things are going to shake out. But one thing I know for sure is if I was building guitars or having my guitars built in foreign countries and then shipping them into the United States to sell to my customers or to deliver to my customers, I'd be really concerned right now. Because anytime tariffs are raised on anything, it affects everything and trade wars and all that stuff could have a dire effect on that sort of a business model. And I know a lot of luthiers out there are, you know, they still build their, their guitars, you know, a few of them in their shops, but they're having a lot of them manufactured in Japan, Korea, Vietnam, India, China. And trade wars could be potentially disastrous for that approach. But I don't know for sure. You know, I'm not an expert in this. I just can't help but feel that whenever you see a price go up, it goes up. And that's just, you know, we see it happen all the time. And guitars are not immune to it for sure. And I would think that there's going to be a potential for a lot of these clone guitars, you know, the Strat knockoffs, the Telecaster knockoffs, the Les Paul knockoffs, Ibanez, PRS, all of them are being knocked off coming out of Asia, Southeast Asia. That may be coming to an end because I think that that's part of the trade negotiations that they're trying to push through is trademark and copyright protection. So. Again, we'll see where that ends up. But where what it has to do with CNC technology is, and this is what's got me kind of concerned, is I can put out plans and, and instructions on how to build one of these machines, including a listing of all the parts that you need. But I'm already starting to notice that some of the parts that I use to build this CNC machine have suddenly disappeared. I can't find them. And so I'm concerned that with these tariffs and trade war and all this stuff that's happening, that it's going to get harder and harder to find some of these parts. And if you want to buy them sourced locally, you know, if like here in the United States or in Europe, it's going to be hugely expensive. So that's kind of where I'm a little bit concerned about this being affordable to us. So we'll just have to wait and see. And I think really that's all I've got for this episode. And I'm going to get back to spraying a few things. 
And in the next episode, who knows again what I'll talk, talk about. I'm hoping to have my ergonomic guitar finished and my gold topped guitar finished. Those are the ones that I'm kind of waiting on some parts for. So, but once that's all done, I'll show you how those turned out. And I'll start thinking about another controversial topic that uh, I can cover. I had another thought about the reason why guitar sales have dropped so dramatically in the recent years. And some of you are not going to like this, but I'll save that for a future episode and kind of tease you a little bit. So until the next episode, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead. I know I didn't show a lot in this episode, but if you liked it, click the like button. If you don't subscribe, click subscribe. Click the bell so that you get notified when I post new videos, you know, which is roughly twice a week, so you won't get spammed. And until the next episode, take care, and we will see you soon. Yeah.